Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Peahens Ponderings podcast. I'm your host, TJ King. And I'm not. <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by The Spanish Peacock, a veteran-owned and operated micro-business in Jefferson, Maryland. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and now, <laughs> a word from our sponsor, which is apparently mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't, but a uh, word from our sponsor. Meliorism. Thank you. Today, um, I am joined by Mike King, the Spanish Peacock, to talk about how 2020 went, a year in review, and look ahead to what 2021 may have in store for uh, our small business here. Optimism. That's what the word of the day should Optimism. have been. Optimism. Would you like to go back to the... No, we'll just, that'll be a, a, another word for the day. Another word for the day, okay. 50 cent words, I'm full of them. Can't spell them, but I'm <laughs> full of them. Optimism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, we're punchy. We've been up since 4.50 this morning. Remember to Annunciation. Maybe enunciate. Is that another word? Maybe enunciate should be the All word right, for the day. Let's get past the okay. word for the days and get on to 2020 year in review. As I was saying, this time we're joined by Mike King of the Spanish Peacock to talk about 2020, the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> good won't take very long. <laughs> well, um, 2020 wasn't really as bad as it could have been no. in the grand scheme of things. We have to start off with saying um, nobody that we know has died of COVID, so it could always be worse. True. So with that said, it could always be worse. Let's start off with, um, I don't know, maybe like a chronological look. Let's talk first about Cedar Springs Fiber Arts Retreat. Okay. So <clears throat> earlier, way earlier in 2020, back in February, I believe, we decided to start actually actively taking the next steps towards this dream we had of the Cedar Springs Fiber Arts Retreat. Right. Um, and can you tell, for those who might not be aware, who haven't listened to every single live stream where we've talked about it, can you just say a few words about what Cedar Springs Fiber Arts Retreat was envisioned to be? Cedar Springs was envisioned to be a full immersion fiber experience or a place where you could have a full immersion uh, fiber arts experience. Uh, a piece of land located in West Virginia, uh, open spaces, a larger shop with more equipment in it where I could teach wood turning to anyone who wanted to learn. Uh, a retail establishment so people could actually come to the place and touch and feel without us being involved in a uh, fiber art show. Right, right. Um, Dyer's Garden. Dyer's Garden. Messy Arts Pavilion. Paths to walk on, just a place to come and relax. Uh, yurts that people could stay in for weekend retreat events. Right, and RV uh, hookups too, I think we were talking about. Not maybe. necessarily RV hookups, but you get into weirdness there. Oh, you but mentioned RV hookups a when place, we were doing this well, yesterday. Well, a place where RVs could park. Uh, Not necessarily hook up to power. Gotcha. Because um, then you have to have septic and, anyway. Anyway. Um, place where they could pitch a tent if they wanted to, you know. Whatever the case may be. Uh, a place where venues or, or people, organizations uh, that didn't, that wanted to hold a retreat or something like that could rent the facility or, you know, and just bring people in and, and have access to the Messy Arts Pavilion, the commercial kitchen, the, uh, the yurts to stay in, places to camp, the fire pit, nature right. trails, you know, the idea, everything. The idea being a lot of times if you want to have a fiber arts retreat, or host a class, you have to find a venue that can be adjusted to accommodate right. the specific needs of fiber artists. And the Cedar Springs Fiber Arts Retreat was going to be a location that was ready for that and configured for that and designed for it from the very beginning. Right, not a, not a lot of small organizations can afford to 
rent an entire fairgrounds. Right. Something like that. This was something that people could come in and host small events and we would host events and, mm -hmm. you know, just right. a, a place where people could come and relax for a weekend. Right. And the timing was critical too. Like I said, we were starting to look at this in February of 2020, specifically because we're getting to that stage where our kids, uh, one was about to graduate from high school, the other one at the time, it was going to be another two years till they graduated from high school. And the idea was we needed to go ahead and find the right property and start building the infrastructure so that by the time the second one had graduated from high school, we could just make the move with a minimum of downtime for the Spanish Peacock business. Right. I can't, I can't, honestly can't afford to be down for more than a month. Right. Uh, so we wanted to be able to have a turnkey shop ready to go uh, so it could just transfer the equipment and still and, and be up and running in, in the shortest amount of time possible. Right. Um, and so when we actually had found an ideal piece of property, it was very reasonably priced. It uh, was, needed a little bit of work, but... It was uh, unrestricted. Right, which is extremely important. There's a lot of places, especially... Um, as you get closer to the bigger cities where, you know, they've got a lot of rules about what you can and cannot do. So if we wanted to have and HOAs goats and, and, and rabbits and oh, things like that. Oh, got about the goats and the rabbits. Right, goats and, and rabbits. Angora bunnies and humanely, humanely bred, bred pagora goats. goats. Yep. Not sheep, um, goats. But when we went and tried to talk to the bank about getting a loan in order to move forward with purchasing this property, what, what, what was it that they said again? Uh, your paperwork looks really good, but do either of you have a real job? Because at that particular point in time, we were both working full time um, with the Spanish Peacock and our other micro businesses. Yeah, it had been for over, over a, a year, year yeah. at that point. Yep. And the numbers look good. Right, but it still looked like a risk from the bank's perspective. Yeah. So we decided to start the GoFundMe. Um, for those of you who weren't aware that there's a GoFundMe out there right now, and that was February, and it had a fair bit of traction at first oh, yeah, it, because it, it we were trying quick. to do things on our own and on our own terms. And if the banks weren't going to give us money, we were going to turn to well, we did turn to our supporters right. to try to get the, the fiber um, arts community right to try to get some of the funds we needed to make a down payment and start moving forward. It started strong. It did. It started really well. Uh, there were some surprisingly large donations that came in, and yeah, it was. It looked. It, it looked, looked like really we, good. Looked like we might have a looked chance. Looked really good through February, and, and then, then March happened. March rolled around, and COVID happened. Although obviously, we now know that COVID probably had been around since December. Right. But mid March is when everything started really tanking in terms of being able to go places. Events being and shows being canceled, <laughs> the kids being home from school, things like that. Every minute of every day. I generally consider March 13th to be the start of quarantine for us anyway, because that was the Friday when, of course it was a Friday the 13th, when the kids came home two hours early from school that Friday. And never <laughs> left again. So the administration wanted to take the weekend to figure out what school was going to look like the following Monday. And yeah, the, the kids never went back to school. Um, so that's as far as home life goes where it started. But I actually was supposed to teach a supported spinning class, my gentle art of supported spinning. And then it was scheduled for that Sunday. And you were actually going to do a, like a little trunk show. Yeah. And... That Wednesday, the lady who was hosting the class and I started saying, you know, maybe we should postpone for a little while and see how things shake out because we were watching the news and thinking that maybe sometime a little bit later would be better to yeah, just we, reschedule. We just to and of course, lay low for two weeks and right, everything will be right. fine. So the class never got rescheduled. And then um, Homespun Yarn Party was the following Sunday. Right. So, so Sunday, the 22nd. So this would have been, was it our second or third year? I guess it would have been our third year third at Homespun. Third year, right. And, you know, our first big Spanish Peacock show Oh, we year. had, we had, 
new oh, booth. We had a new booth that's ready right. to go. So we had invested all this money in a new shorter booth because I don't know how many of you have ever been to Homespun Yarn Party. It's really, really, really small you have and you very, have very, six, very cramped. A six by six, you have 36 square feet to set up in. And if you've seen our and booth at Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival, you know we have a really big display. With eight foot walls. Yes. In a space that small, oh, that kind right. of blocks out the light from everybody else. And they you have, have to put to, me up in a corner. And you have to take all of your um, booth setup in from this parking lot that's way up and down and around the slope and through Over this the hall. Over the hill and through the through hauler. Th right. Um, and then wait in line. Right. So we had specifically purchased new grid wall to make homespun yarn party even easier to set up for and they rightly made the call you know we're not going to do this in person we're going to go virtual and of course at in march everybody's like what does virtual mean <laughs> ks virtual what, what do you mean we're going to have a virtual fiber show and we're all scratching our heads trying to figure out what that even looks like so we set up our homespun yarn party booth in the basement yeah um, so we this, had no idea how to go virtual you guys you guys can't really see much except for the banner but this is our homespun yarn party booth so although at least we, we, were able we to only put set it, up six by four yeah but it still it became our home away from home or our show away from show almost a year we've been well all, we're yeah, going on we're going on i guess what, this would be months? 10 or 11 months now yeah. that we've been doing shows virtually from this very booth i haven't got to use my bowflex in 10 months <laughs> and i'm really really upset about that mm -hmm, sure um so because we had that early push to go virtual the 22nd would have been our first live stream and shop update right and we were like <laughs> Two monkeys banging our head against the computer going, <laughs> how do we do this? And that's funny because we've come so far in 10 months. And we're still two monkeys banging our head against the computer trying to figure out how to do this. I would from like the, to say you're wrong. From the hour that we spent trying wrong. to figure out why the yeah. microphones weren't working. That, when that's why it wasn't working today. And then there right. was all day yesterday right. trying to figure out where, why things weren't working. And every single time we try to do anything, there's... There's always something... Well, because I keep insisting on upgrading, like every single time we're trying something new. So those of you who are listening to this podcast, you can't see this, but we've actually ditched the ugly headsets, the big, the big microphones. Because you won't let me use elf voice. <laughs> so, so there's no point in us listening to it if we can't hear the elf voice ourselves. And um, we're trying wireless microphones so that we can actually... Um, turn one of the our heads. Turn our heads, because one of the things that we were heard. running into last time was that as we were recording the podcast, the one about um, why spindles wobble, we would turn. And as we would turn, you would lose the sound. So we're, we're experimenting even as we enter month 10 to 11 of virtual shows and um, live COVID, streaming. COVID 2.0. Right. Yeah. Um, the irony being, we had a specific goal for 2020 in terms of being better integrated with the local fiber arts community. Right. The Mid-Atlantic region has actually got a number of fiber arts guilds and shows and events that we hadn't previously been uh, part of because it just wasn't really something that we were able to fit in. But since I was working for the Spanish Peacock also, between the two of us, we were actually going to try to do more small local shows. Um, the Fiber Arts Studio Tour was scheduled for June, and that's one that's actually the, the various farms host, and people go from farm to farm to farm visiting the specific farms and guest vendors who are at the farms, and we were going to be a guest vendor at one of those. And um, the Frederick Fiber Festival in November, we were going to do that as well. These were all things that we I think had. We had on in total about a half a dozen right so different events we were up. we were focusing on more smaller local events so that we could become better known with our own community here and because of covid you can almost maybe say thanks to covid if this is no it is something to be thankful for that didn't work but we now are better connected to a global community of fiber right. artists because once we started taking our virtual shows online 
people from all over the world have been able, able to participate. When we've done our live streams and shop updates, we've had people from Australia, uh, a number of different people from Europe, and even one person from Singapore, Singapore. managed to stay up. Or I think she set her alarm and got up super early in the morning in order to catch one of our live streams. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I, I, when you look this year at the international, when I got the feed out for international package service, I was amazed at all the different, I yep. mean, New Zealand, Australia, <laughs> England, <laughs> Singapore, Hong Kong, China, Germany, Spain, Portugal, uh, Norway, Iceland, Finland, Finland, and someplace in the Czech Republic, and someplace in the former Soviet Union. So, yeah, cool. Right. I wish I had a map and I could put little pins. Uh, that might be something that everywhere. we want to do at some point. Maybe we can do a virtual map though, so we can actually post it on the, like, the Spanish Peacock I website tried or that. something. I tried that. I used to have a map when when we were back in the in the small shop back in the townhouse and I was working in the dungeon, I had a two by three poster board map and I like wore Maryland and Virginia out. I couldn't yeah. fit any more pins in there, but it was fun. And then it fell and I was like, nah, I'm done. We were moving. <laughs> so from the previous year's podcast, the 2019 year in review and the 2020 look ahead, one of the things that I had predicted that we could look forward to in 2020 was that it would be the year of the supported spindle. I was specifically referring to the fact that Ply Magazine was going to have, um, their, their summer issue was going to be focused on um, supported spindles and we had a new Facebook group, well it might not have been new at, anymore at that point, the Facebook group for supported spindles anonymous, lots of good traffic there and, and, and people. Uh, working together to help each other out and learn supported spinning. And then, of course, that's primarily what I do. And I would say that that prediction might have been the only one for 2020 that came true, but I would say that that was definitely the case, although that's not necessarily, <laughs> not necessarily something that you're as thrilled about as I am. <laughs> no, I, I'm thrilled about it. It was, uh, I guess, the reality of that hit just a few days ago. Uh, was looking at YouTube videos and went down the rabbit hole and somebody, I saw a picture of one of my spindles and went to watch the video and the person doing it talked about uh, my king, the Spanish peacock. She said some really nice stuff, Master Wood Turner. And then said, um, known for his supported spindles, but makes really nice top worlds as well. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> because you started off in the top world top world. Top worlds were, yeah, uh, top and bottom worlds were, you know, it was like nobody in the world was making bottom worlds. Uh, right. I liked top worlds. I didn't know anything about supported spindles. Nobody knew anything about supported spinning, really. Right. There wasn't it's, much to it. It's just become a thing really recently. And so there's top world spindles and even a bottom world spindle languishing on the Spanish Peacock website and you can't keep supported spindles in stock. Right. I haven't, I have, other than say the, uh, the COVID spindles, I haven't made a top world, I've made two, maybe two dozen top worlds last year. There's just not the demand yeah. for them. Everything that the majority of stuff sold was made prior to January 1st in preparation for uh, homespun. And that tote has, you know, you only need so many spindles for a four-hour show. Or so one would think. Or so one would think. But, yeah, it, it, was, it was definitely supported spindle foo is strong uh, this year. And I hope it continues that way because I'm having a lot of fun refining designs, so to speak, playing with. Well, let's take a moment to talk about some of the new Spanish Peacock products. Since you mentioned supported spinning, um, one of the new releases, for lack of a better word, as far as Spanish Peacock spindles go, is the Bob. <laughs> if anybody hasn't heard of the Bob, this has become all the rage. 
a few years it's ago, on a life of its own. It really has. A few years ago, um, everybody wanted a ninja. Well, ninjas. I don't have a ninja here to show off. And I had a specific ninja I wanted to use for this too. Oh, oh well. Oh well. Picture, if you will, a bead with half of it taken out. So the ninja was the cross between a bead and a Tibetan spindle because it had the shorter, thinner shaft of the bead and a smaller whorl, but it was still hollowed out on the inside, so you got a really nice rim-weighted effect. Drop some weight. Yep. So Picked up some speed. Right. A lot of speed. In mm -hmm. fact, um, almost, it too when, almost too much speed. When people are, are asking my opinion on what spindles to start with, I will not anymore say a ninja. Even though my personal favorite spindle to spin on is still a ninja, um, I would not recommend that to start with. But I, I digress. I may have to do an updated uh, Choosing a Supported Spindle podcast at some point with uh, all the new information that's come out. Do you even have one of the newer ones? A new ninja? Yeah. Well, you just need to make me one, I guess. <coughs> um, yeah. The Bob, by contrast, I don't know how well you guys can see this. The original Bob. This is the original Bob. Funny story. Um, I had just finished, this was back in April, the Supported Spindle Fashion Show. So I spent, um, I guess, two hours on a Facebook live stream showing off my top 10 favorite supported spindles. And the very next day, he brings me this. And I'm like, wow, look at how well crafted and engineered this particular spindle is. He paid attention to everything I said during the live stream. So it's got a nice 12 inch shaft. The whorl is a little bit um, shallower. And, and more curved and more hollowed out compared to like a standard Tibetan. So this is a bob, this is a regular Tibetan. And it, the momentum is crazy on one of these. You flick it and it just spins forever. And I'm like, wow, he really engineered something new and different and even better. Come to find out. I had a maple whorl that was too wide to use for anything else, and it just kind of happened. It was apparently a mistake. Well, not a mistake. It, it was, was unplanned. It, it was, was unplanned. It was an instance of letting the wood be what it wanted to be. Right. So for those of you who haven't heard, he does firmly believe that the wood speaks. And if you listen, the wood will tell you what it wants to be. And I, you guys can't even tell that this is moving because the spin is so smooth. This was the original Bob. And bobs have become a thing because of how the weight is distributed. It spins fast and it spins long. The momentum lasts forever. And this has become all the rage on um, the Spanish Peacock website. Yeah, can't, Every, uh, everybody can't, wants can't a bob. Fast enough. And uh, if you are ever on the Spanish Peacock website shopping and you're like, well, it says Tibetan. I don't know what kind of Tibetan it is. Every single listing for a bob will say, oh, it's you, Bob. Or something along those lines. Yeah. No, they say, oh, it's Do you, Bob. Do everyone? Everyone, because I write it, so I know what it says. Luckily, that's something I haven't had to do in a long time. Why do you call them bobs? Well. It's a question we get every single time. Why do you call it a so, bob? Uh, Why is it a bob, not like a... Uh, for a while, I was referring to it as the bobbed Tibetan. Bobbed Tibetan. As a way to kind of explain why it was called a bob. <clears throat> Anybody who's old like me and watched <laughs> TV years and years ago knew there was a, uh, was a Nissan Sentra commercial. And everything about it was directed at Bob. Parking for Bob only. Off-ramp for Bob only. And when the police officer pulls him over at the end, he says, oh, it's you, Bob. So it became a Bob. Yes. Uh, and, and the girl, It's one of the, those names that just stuck. The children, when they were growing up, referred to everything as Bob. Hair ties are still Bob. Hair ties are still Bob. Uh, bugs on the wall, Bob. Stuffed animals, Bob. Uh, sheep the, in Minecraft. Bob. Bob. Yeah. Oh, Every and now it's Kevin. Uh, Kevin's, the, the Kevin's stink, just the stink bug. Yes, this, any okay. stink bug who ends up in the house by accident is labeled uh, Kevin. Kevin. There's a, a Kevin flying around. Dead. So, except then they smell. Yeah. I've just been throwing them outside so they can die in the freezing cold. They'll just go dormant and come back next year and eat everything. Yes, because that's what stink bugs do. 
in addition to the new spindle type, affectionately known as the bob, 2020 also saw a resurgence of one of our old favorites. You just love doing that, don't you? The Turkish spindle. Look at that. Look at it go. There haven't been a lot of them, but they have been. I can't get this to show up correct on the camera. <laughs> um, there have been Spanish peacock Turks being made. I might have had to punk him into it because... Um, you didn't punk me into it. You, I was going to show you, everybody the old one that I still had. You not only attacked me with attack blackmail. Is a, attack is a strong word. Attack is a perfect word. Attack me with blackmail. You also put the word out to other people. Hey, there's going to be Turks. No, bug him about Turks. Oh, yeah, that too. And, you know. It became a thing. Everybody right. was like, so are there going to be any Turks I this update? I didn't want to do live feeds because I knew that was going to be a question. That Every and, single am time. Am I wearing pants? Every single time. One of these times I'm not going to. And if any, if Matt, if you're watching this podcast, yes, he's wearing pants. Yes, because as soon as we're done here, he's changing shirts and hats and... Going back out to the shop. Going out to the shop again, because... Spindles ain't going to make themselves. Right now, for the next one, well, people can look at the Facebook page and see what's in the works. Yes. Yep. The other big products we had for 2020... We're not going to hold these up to demonstrate because the last podcast... Because they're full of spindles. <laughs> the last podcast was specifically about this. But we also introduced some new storage solutions for spindles. Yeah. We originally had just the slim spindle storage stand that held up to five spindles. Well, that Was that 2019 or was that 2020? That was 2019. Okay. And then 2020, we introduced a double wide version. And that's just how we call it. We call it the double wide. Double um, wide trailer. Right. So that holds up to 10, especially if you've got like narrow whorls or supported spindles like Russians. And we also came up with the Tote Life spindle storage. Mike finally found... Tote Life, Tote <laughs> Life, Tote Life. Mike finally found the perfect shaped tote for um, the Tote Life stand. And let me tell you how hard it is to find a tote with specific measurements and things you're looking for. You can find generally close to what you want, but then you have to drop the tray down so far that the shaft won't fit or the tips will get crushed. Finally found one and COVID. Right. It's almost never in stock. So if you go to the Spanish Peacock website <clears throat> and look at the Tote Life um, product listing, there's actually a link to Target's website, which shows the exact dimensions and everything. Walmart. You can also pick uh, them up at Walmart. Walmart also has them now. Yeah. If you want more information or pictures, you can go on SpanishPeacock.com or, again, reference the previous uh, YouTube video. I'll include a link below. So let's take a few minutes to talk about what 2021 may have in store. Again, uh, don't want to make any hard predictions because who knows. Um, but... Let's start off with the elephant in the room. Whether or not there are going to be any in-person fiber shows this year. Uh, at this point, it's really hard to say. I know a couple of the venues have already decided to go virtual late last year. Oh, you know, um, the Mid-Atlantic Fiber Arts Association had decided as early as September right. that their conference in June was going to be virtual. And um, Maryland Sheep and Wool has decided to go virtual this year as well. Well, and the COVID numbers are still uh, on the rise. And now there's oh, all we these, have new flavors, and too. And we now have these new strains to worry about. Right. So it's really hard to predict. It's probably going to be later in the year. If at all. If um, at all. I don't see anything before July, truthfully. And beyond that, it, it, it's anybody's guess. Um, it all depends on what the numbers do and what the powers that be tell us we need to do. Right. And, um, and that has consequences, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so when put on the spot and asked about New Year's resolutions, I resolved not to trim my beard or cut the length of my beard until our next in-person show. Which means if we end up going 2021 with no in-person shows, 
we're going to be able to braid that. Yeah. I'll be moving to West Virginia. You'll blend right with, in. With the beard in place already. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, I get to trim it on the sides, just not length. And it's already, it's not quite the longest it's ever been, but it's getting there. It's getting there. So as far as virtual shows go, um, when we sat back and looked at how everything went in 2021, the one show that we had participated the most, um, well, most of the shows basically just did like a Facebook thing. Right. SVFF, Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival, was a little different because they decided to actually have their show on a virtual show on a separate platform. Uh, actual event coordinator event. Right. Runner. So something called Eventony. So that was different. But as far as 2021 goes, we'll have to see whether we are going to do any... Um, I don't know, coordinated shows, like actually participate in any fiber shows, virtual fiber shows, as opposed to just doing our own thing. Right. I, we'll, we'll weigh each one as information becomes available and we see what their platforms are and how Well, because how if, it it's, works. if it's just people doing a, a big Facebook group, we can do our own Facebook thing. Right. It doesn't really... There's, there's no synchronicity to it, like there is in an in-person show. Right. So, um, of course, anything that we do schedule as far as a virtual show goes, subscribe to the newsletter and check us out on Facebook because the newsletter here is first, even though sometimes that's only like an hour or two before it gets posted to Facebook, um, because we'll definitely let everybody know when we're planning on doing an actual show. And when we say show, we're specifically talking about a live stream or other online interaction between us and the customers as well as a shop update. There may be live streams that don't come with a shop update, but when we're talking about virtual shows, we're talking about the two together. Some kind of online interaction like a live stream and a shop update. Right. Uh, we will, of course, support in any way we can the other virtual shows and communities. I just don't know if we'll participate on their platforms. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a look at them on a case-by-case. -case. I like how you put that earlier. And um, evaluate whether or not it makes sense. Exactly. So speaking of shop updates. We speaking of elephants in the room. Speaking of elephants in the room. <coughs> and maybe a little bit of a sore subject for some people. Um, the virtual shows and the shop updates that go with a virtual show are not our only shop updates. But when we're doing other shop updates outside of the virtual shows that we just described, we always do those unannounced. We, how is it that you put it? Stealth. <laughs> yes, they're stealth, stealth updates. And this is done on purpose for a number of reasons. Yeah, we, would you like to say a few words about that? Etsy was a bad experience. Uh, they have no cart protection, and when we used to do shop updates, announced shop updates on Etsy, it was a virtual bloodbath. Uh, a lot of feelings got hurt. Um, cart jacking is a thing, and in unintentional as it may be, it happens. Um, our website, like Etsy, does not have cart protection. So if we announce when a shop update is going to be it's it's the same carnage and people's feelings get hurt and, and they're super disappointed yeah very because disappointed even if you log into paypal ahead of time which we always recommend folks do if your internet glitches as you're in the process of checking out somebody else can complete their transaction first and the spindle you thought you had in your cart is gone right by the time you actually complete the transaction and people get upset and feelings get hurt and I get nasty emails. Um, so we chose to update the shop unannounced. We vary the times, we vary the days. Absolutely. So the, f m the largest amount of people in the largest amount of places have an opportunity 
to get in on the fun. Um, we actually have a calendar, not a calendar, a clock, an electronic clock that lists off the time in uh, London, Germany, Singapore, New Australia, Zealand. and New Zealand. So we actually probably put too much t thought into <laughs> the timing of the updates, but we are working extra hard to make sure that people in whatever time zone have a chance at some point to score a spindle. Right. And, not, and people who aren't on Facebook, too, because that's the other side of only ever announcing updates um, in the newsletter on Facebook. Then someone who's only just found out about the Spanish Peacock has no way of knowing any of those right. things. So they go to the website, and if there's been a stealth update, then maybe they happen to find something because other people aren't aware that there's inventory in stock. Right. Um, I'll and I mean, there'll, there'll be indications that there'll be hints. There'll be hints that something is coming up. If you see a picture of a bunch of whirls, like I posted yesterday, there's no reason to go camp on the website. They're days mm -hmm. or a week away from being ready to go. Right. I still have to shaft them. We still have to photograph them. We still have to inventory and get everything loaded to the site. Right. Uh, if you start seeing trays of completed spindles and it's a Thursday, probably a good indication that within the next couple of days or that weekend that there's going to be an update. Um, Less likely if we have a scheduled show planned. Right. But then usually we say that we're holding the inventory for the exactly. scheduled show update. So exactly. Just a few hints, but we really do. We're not playing games. Yeah, I actually with people. actually got an email that somebody was really really upset, and they're like, you know, it's really cruel to play these little games, uh, and it's not a game. It's it's we don't intentionally post spindles in secret to to torture people or or to tease anybody. It's just we're trying to give everybody a fair shot. Right. And if I post everything at six o'clock on a Thursday night, you know, Eastern time, then Maryland and Virginia and the, the mid-Atlantic area score huge. California's still at work. New Zealand's asleep. Right. You know, it, we thought it, it seemed like the fairest way to do things and um, that's the way I'm going to continue to do it. Right. And even if it means you have to get up at three o'clock in the morning to <laughs> come downstairs and push the buttons, because I don't know how. I don't. Sure, sure. Right. Yes, no. I know all the tech. He doesn't know how to push the buttons to make a little shop update go live at three. All Maybe right. I accidentally kick him as I'm crawling out of bed. Or but. Slam the door or <laughs> stomp down the stairs. No, nothing like that. But there will continue to be updates throughout 2021. There will. Yes. And I'll be working on the next batch as soon as you click that button and I can change shirts. Yes. Right, so we need to get this wrapped up. One more thing to say about 2021 and activities, schedules, hopes, dreams, uh, what have you. We've had a couple of people ask whether there were going to be any supported spinning classes. At this particular point in time, I'm just gonna say probably not, because even if we're wearing masks, I can't teach supported spinning socially distanced. Um, I need to be in your bubble, I need to be watching what your hands are doing and how you're holding the spindle and, and what your flicking hand is doing versus your drafting hand. And I can't do that from six feet away. I also can't do it online very well because again, online, I did try to do one supported spinning class in 2020 and the student came out of it being able to spin supported. So as far as that goes, you could call it a win, but it was extremely stressful for me because I you know, it's one dimensional. I couldn't get around over here or around over there. And when they said, oh, my fiber just keeps coming right off the spindle, I couldn't really evaluate what body movement positions have to change in order for her to get a more successful outcome. Again, she ended up having a success in the end, but it was just so stressful for me. I don't see anything like that happening um, online classes, I mean, um, for 2021. That said, I am going to try to do some more videos that focus on supported spinning techniques. The exact same situation. I've tended to avoid these in the past because if you can't see every single angle or walk around me while I'm doing it so you can see what's going on 
like from this side or this side or this side, um, I feel like it's not as effective. But we may be able to get the cell cam, which was introduced in the last YouTube video, um, set up from one angle on the, on the really nice boom that we've got for it, and the webcam to get a straight on angle, and maybe I can figure out one other camera or something. Something on like a curved track that just goes back and forth. Speaking of two monkeys banging their heads <laughs> no. against heck. <laughs> <coughs> but you know what, maybe. We'll, we'll just have to see, but that way um, I can help more people, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, get the hang of supported spinning even while we're still um, mostly staying at home and social distancing and avoiding um, physical interactions with people. Right. Um, along the same lines, we've had a couple of discussions about trying to find some way to do a virtual spin-in. Uh, s details still TBD because the problem with a live stream is it's one direction. It's us broadcasting to an audience and like on Facebook or even if we tried to do YouTube, everybody can, can leave comments, but you can't everybody hold up their spindles, let's see what you're spinning, and everybody take turns talking about what they're spinning and what their challenges are and things like that. So I don't know if it makes sense to try to use Zoom or Google Meet, or apparently you can create like a Facebook group, like make a Spanish Peacock group separate from the Spanish Peacock page that would have a meeting room where we could try to do this. Um, we're still figuring all those details out, but that's also something to look for, hopefully coming up in 2021, if we can get all that figured out. Right. Anything else that you want to say about 2021? Anything else I missed? Like I said, I don't want to get too, um, I don't want to get too specific as far as predictions goes, because who knows what 2021 is going to yeah, have. Yeah, we, we tried that last year and it didn't work out so <laughs> no. well. So this year I'm going uh, to say uh, meh. Meh. <laughs> That should have been your word of the day. Me. Me. <laughs> I still haven't figured out the right way to spell it. I think M-E-H sounds right, but there's just not enough emphasis me. on me. Me. So, right. No, uh, I'm good. Okay. I'm going to go back out and keep working on the next update. And we'll decide whether it's going to be stealth or live feed or if it'll be live feed, you'll hear about it. If not, you won't. Yep. That's all I got. Okay, great. That's it for today's podcast. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. If you enjoyed the YouTube version of this podcast, definitely give us a thumbs up and a like and um, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, if you absolutely hate it and you'd rather us just go back to the audio version of the podcast, that's fine too. Leave us a message in the comments below and let us know because without your feedback, we don't really... Have a clue. Have a clue. <laughs> We're just two monkeys, two monkeys banging monkeys. our head against tech. Right. We need to come up with a little logo of that. Instead of the crossed supported spindles, we'll just have two monkeys banging their heads <laughs> against tech. Oh, you could, if you can make a GIF out of it, that would be best. Yes, yes. I will get right on that face, in all my free face time. Face typing. And remember, you keep making beautiful fiber arts, and the Spanish peacock will keep making beautiful tools to help you do so. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>